Well, welcome everybody. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. So glad you are here today. Welcome to the guests. Hope you guys um, are enjoying your time with us here at 412 Church in Marietta. And um, we always enjoy coming together and hearing God's Word together. And we do, like I said, I hope you enjoy your time with us as well. And maybe you may want to come back. Uh, if you're here today and you are new to Christianity, maybe somebody dragged you out tonight, you want to see what this is all about, I want you to know something, especially on this Christmas season. I want you to know that you are loved by God. God loves you so much, and this is what we're celebrating tonight is the fact that he loved us so much that he sent his only son. And the reason he sent his only son is because just like many of you, people like me who have already given our lives over to Christ, we're not perfect. We don't live a life of perfection. We try, but we, we make mistakes. And we don't live up to the standard that God has placed in the Bible. And because we don't live up to the standard, he sent his son because his son Jesus did live up to the standard, and his son was that person who lived that perfect life, died a death on a cross, but he raised again. We talk about that during Easter. Uh, he, he was risen from the dead, sends his Holy Spirit to live in anybody who would believe in him, and it's an incredible gift that we have in that. God, by his Spirit in us, gives us all the love and joy and peace and kindness and patience and gentleness and self-control, all those things that we need to live the way God's called us to live. And so again, if you're new, uh, we do hope you enjoy your time and we want you to walk away knowing that you are loved by God and we love you as well. Uh, we do believe this right here. We call it a Bible, but uh, for those of us that truly follow God, we know that this is two things. It's inerrant and it's infallible, meaning everything that's in here is perfect, it's complete, it does not contradict itself in any way. The Bible has never changed, ever. Uh, I firmly believe this. If you are new to this whole thing, I challenge you, prove me wrong in what I've just said. The Bible is 100% perfect and accurate in every way. We do believe that here at 412 Church in Marietta, and because of that, we are going to be in Luke chapter 1. And so if you brought your Bibles with you today, Luke chapter 1 is where we're going to be. The title of the message is, Through the Eyes of a Child. Now, as you guys are making your way to Luke chapter 1, I want to invite uh, all of you back next, this coming Sunday for something very important. In Daniel chapter 12, we're told something very specific. We are told that you know, Daniel was one of the prophets in the Old Testament. He was told that the words that were given to him, that they were to be closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Those of us who do believe in Jesus, we believe that he came that first time, but we also believe what the Bible says, and the Bible says he's coming back again. And there was very specific things that we were told about his second coming, his return. We were told something very, lots of very specific things, and what this tells us here is that, that it's supposed to be sealed up, that during that time of the end, many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Even if you're not a, a Christian, you know there is wickedness in this world, and you see the wicked doing wickedly. Um, not only that, but it says that none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And so I want to invite you out this Sunday, 9 and 11. We're going to do a prophecy update. It's called Prophecy Reopen. This was to be sealed up till the time of the end. This Sunday, we're going to reopen it. We're going to take a look at what God said, and I'm going to show you everything that's going on. Well, not everything, but I'm going to show you as much as I can in a Sunday morning service what's going on in the world, where we're at on that timeline, because we do know there is so much we're supposed to be looking for. Over and over again in the New Testament, we are told, told to watch. We're to, supposed to be paying attention to what's going on around us. And so this Sunday will be a way for you to watch and see what's going on. So hopefully you guys can come back this Sunday. Also, if you're new, I want to let you know you can go to 412marietta.com forward slash sermons and you can catch up with us. Any of our sermons are there. We've, we've recorded them. You can watch them. Um, and, and kind of catch up with us, and we hope that you take the time to do that because, again, we firmly believe that the Word of God is true, it's right, and we know this, it changes lives. All right, that being said, I want to talk to you today about, of course, the birth of Jesus, but I want to talk to you about it through the eyes of a child. 
I think it's so beautiful having the kids up here earlier, and, and Brittany did such a great job preparing the kids. I mean, just so wonderful. A lot of work went into that, and um, it's really cool to see the kids, because there's something about children. Uh, Jesus loves children. He absolutely loves children, and as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, what we are celebrating is the fact that there is a Messiah, that there is a Savior of the world. Jesus is known as the King of Kings. In fact, when he came the first time, everybody thought he was going to set up his kingdom then, but he's coming back to send up, set up his kingdom. And you and me, anybody who would give their life over to Jesus, we get to be with Jesus in that kingdom as he's ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. He's going to do that, the Bible tells us. And when we're celebrating his birth, what we're celebrating is that he began that work some 2,000 years ago of developing that kingdom line. We know that he was supposed to be born of the line of David, and he was. We'll see that in the scriptures today. He was born in the line of David, and he's going to set up a kingdom in Jerusalem. He's going to rule from there. And like I said, we get to receive of that. But here's something very specific that Jesus told us in Mark chapter 10. You don't have to turn there. We'll throw it up on the screen for you. But in Mark chapter 10, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. This gift of being in God's kingdom is something that you can receive but the Bible tells us that we have to receive it as a little child. And I think that's very key for us, especially those of us who are adults, because we have to understand what Jesus is talking about there. Jesus says that we have to receive it as a little child. You know, children, they will receive from their parents without feeling like they have to earn it. Don't believe me? Just film your kids tomorrow morning. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They're not going to wake up and go, okay, I'm going to go open the presents, but what do I have to do to earn it? Kids will receive, and it's just something that they're ready and willing to do. Kids will leave all the problems to their parents. They just know that their parents are going to take care of things. And children trust their parents. In other words, they have faith in what their parents have said. If their parents say they're going to do something, they believe their parents at their parents' word. So if you're a note taker tonight, I'm going to give you three takeaways out of God's word to go home and discuss these things in your Christmas dinner. Three things that you and I need to know about the gift of God's kingdom and how we're to receive it as children. You guys ready to get into God's word? All right. So the first thing is this. Receiving the gift of Jesus as a child recognizes that there is nothing you can do to earn it. Take a look at Luke chapter 1. We're going to pick up in verse 26. And there we see that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. When it says the sixth month, it's referring to Mary, the mother of God. She had a aunt. Her name was Elizabeth, and she was pregnant at a very old age. And by this time, she'd been pregnant for six months. And it says in verse 27 that... Um, they, they were in, uh, um, sorry, in Nazareth, and there there was to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph, the house of David. So remember I said that uh, they have to be born of the line of David. So here's this man named Joseph. He's in the line of David. And we know that there's two different lineages we find in Matthew and in Luke. And you'll see that both Joseph and Mary were both in the line of David. It says that the virgin's name was Mary, and verse 28, having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Think about this for a moment. Rejoice, Mary. You are highly favored. What is it that she did to earn that? She didn't do anything, did she? I mean, the angel shows up and says, you are highly favored by God, and he's going to go on to say, you're going to be pregnant with God. You're going to be pregnant with Jesus. She didn't do anything to earn this privilege at all. Think about all the things that we do on earth to try to earn something. You know, people audition for movies all the time. Kids show up and they all audition for a part in a movie. Sometimes they have up to 10,000 kids audition for just one part, and only one kid gets it. Here, Mary did nothing. Think about the Olympics. 
people train their whole life for a spot on an Olympic team. They train their entire life, and they're hoping to get that gold medal. And there's one person that gets a gold medal, right? I mean, one person gets to rise up to the top. They have to earn it. When we look at the gift of Jesus in our lives and us being into the kingdom of God, there's nothing you or I can do to earn it. There's nothing Mary did to earn it. It is just given and it has to be received. But, verse 29, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Jesus means God is Savior. Verse 32 says, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Incredible. This was foretold hundreds of years before this even happened. And the second thing I want you guys to know tonight is this, is that as you receive the kingdom of God as a child, it recognizes that nothing is impossible with God. Take a look at verse 34, because Mary says this. She says, how can this be, since I do not know a man? There's a problem there, isn't there? I mean, there's a woman who's never known a man. She doesn't have a husband. She's never been with a man. You adults know what I'm talking about. That's a problem. How can this even happen, right? That's a problem, right? I mean, this is like, how's that even going to happen? You know, when you and I wake up in the morning and we face our day, we face our week, we look at problems that are coming our way, don't we? And sometimes we'll look at these and go, I, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to make the bill. I, you know, we lost a job and I've got this, this payment, this due, whatever it is. We look at these problems, we go, how is it that we're ever going to get through this because we're looking at this problem, and what we realize is this, this, that with God, all things are possible. God can take care of anything. He can take something that is impossible and make it possible. This here, Mary's going, how's that going to happen? Well, you just have to leave it up to the Lord. Take a look at verse 35. The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing. And you know, here she is saying, how's this going to happen? What's the angel's response? The Holy Spirit. In other words, God, how's, how's this going to happen? How am I going to pass this? How, how on earth can I move forward? God, his Holy Spirit in you, his Holy Spirit there with you. He's going to come upon you. He's going to make you able. He's going to give you, like I said at the very beginning, the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the patience, the gentleness, the self-control, everything that you need to get through everything that may come your way. That's what God does. He takes what seems impossible and he makes it possible. The third thing is this. You simply need to trust God's word. See, that's what children do. They trust their parent. When their parents say something, they trust it. Take a look at verse 38. It says, Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So what she's saying here is, look, God has sent you with a message for me. So I'm hearing what God wants me to hear. It sounds impossible. I don't understand how this is going to happen. Sounds, sounds just incredibly crazy, but I believe it. And so I'm the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me what was just said. What it, the message that God sent, let that be on my life. And you guys know the rest of the story. The kids told us a very modern version of it today. You know, Jesus was born in very humble circumstances. Here's the fact. She believed God at his word. She moved forward in faith. She presented herself willing to be used by God. My wife just recently was with you ladies here, and she gave a message, and 
One of the things my wife shared, I want to share with everybody tonight, and that is this, that Mary was recorded one last time in the Bible saying something, and her last words are so incredibly powerful, powerful for us tonight. And this is what she said. She said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. He said that in John chapter 2. Whatever he says, in other words, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. And think about that for a moment. Mary is taking God at his word. She's moving forward. And the very last thing we see Mary say is some 30 years later, right? This is at a wedding feast. Maybe you guys have read the story, the wedding feast at Cana. It's 30 years later. And they run out of wine at a wedding. And they're like, what are we going to do? We have no more wine. And Jesus goes, or Mary goes to Jesus, hey, son, they, they ran out of wine. Can you help us out? And he's like, it's not my time yet. And, and Mary's pleading with her son, well, can you, can, you just, can you just handle this for them? And Jesus does. Why? Because he's a good Jewish boy, <laughs> loving his mom, honoring his mother, living up to his own word, right? And so what does she say? Whatever my son says to do, just do it. I think that is so incredibly powerful for you and for me tonight to think about those final words of Mary. Whatever my son says to do, just do it. And put yourself in the shoes of those people that she says this to. Whatever he says, just go and do it. All right, so Jesus, what do you want us to do? Go get those pots. Okay. Now fill them up with water. Oh, hold on, Jesus. We don't, we don't need water, okay? We need wine. Didn't your mom tell you this? Yeah, didn't she tell you just do what I said? <laughs> Fill him up with water. Mary, Mary, your son. I don't get him. <laughs> we need wine. He's telling us to fill it up with water. I, I know. Just do what he says. Mary, but your son, your son lost his mind. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand our needs. Do you ever feel like that? You ever feel like God just doesn't understand your needs? Like somehow he, he's just incapable of knowing what's going on in your life and knowing what you need? I know I do. I feel like that sometimes. It's a very misleading feeling. But I think we all, if we're honest, we felt like that. Like, gosh, do, cause, does God really even know? Mary's like, look, just do what he says. There's such a confidence Mary has in her son, Jesus, to just do what he says. And that doesn't happen overnight, I'll grant you that. That happens after 30 years, 30 years of knowing that whatever God says to do, if you just do it, it works out. And that's, God's, that's how God works. I mean, he's put so much in his word for you and for me. That if we'll go through this and go, okay, I'm going to be like a child. I want to be a child of God. I want to receive the kingdom. And so I have to just trust him at his word. If we could take that concept and put that into practice, to be a child of God and say whatever God says to do, even though it doesn't make sense to me, that's okay. Here's the fact. I know this about me. I won't speak for anybody in this room but myself. I know this. God's way of thinking is just a little bit higher than mine. God knows more than I do. God is wiser than me. God has things figured out that I could never figure out. And so when he puts in his word to do something, and I see over and over and over and over again that what God says to do works, I'm just going to want to do it. And that's my encouragement for all of us today. Be children of God. Open up his word. Find out what it says for you. Because I'm telling you, there is something in there for every single situation you're dealing with in life. I don't care what you're going through right now. God's word speaks to it. Everything is in there. And we need to be like children. We need to understand that we can't earn this. Nothing we can do to earn it. We have to understand that nothing is impossible with God, and we need to understand that we can believe him at his word. Amen?
Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we've come together to worship you this Christmas season, to remember the fact that you came once, but also to look forward to the fact that you're coming back. And as we wait and as we watch, I pray that we would be men and women who open your word, that this would be a regular occurrence for us, that every single day we would open your word and find out what it is that you want to say to us for that day. And I pray that we would be men and women that have faith as a child. That we would take you at your word and we would simply do what it says. And that we would recognize as we do that, that nothing is impossible with you. And so bless us this Christmas season, Lord. Bless our meals tonight as we go home and we're with family. Lord, would you encourage us? Would you lift us up? Would you show us that tonight can be... Well, hey, I hope that message you just heard was a blessing to you. It was a challenge to you. It was encouragement to you. Most of all, I hope that if you are a person who has not given your life to Jesus, that this message just encouraged you to do just that. It's very simple to do. All you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you can say this prayer with me right now. Father in heaven... I confess to you today that I am a sinner, uh, Lord, that I have messed up in life. I haven't lived up to your very high standard, nor can I. And so I'm grateful for what I understand today. I understand that you sent your son, Jesus, to walk here on this earth, to live a life of perfection, to die a death on a cross, to go into the grave, but not just to stay there. He came out, he rose again, and I believe that today. I believe he sent his Holy Spirit Lord, that as I believe in you today, your Holy Spirit will come upon me, that you will take up residence within me, that you will give me the strength, you will give me the wisdom, you will give me the courage, you will give me the boldness, the faith, everything I need to live for you. And so I promise this day forward that my life will be a life spent trying to please you. I pray, Lord, that as I mess up, and I know I will, I pray that your grace and your mercy would be upon me and that you would give me the encouragement to move forward. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you just said that prayer, first of all, I want to welcome you to the family of God. I want you to know that angels in heaven are rejoicing, and we here at 412 Marietta want to rejoice with you. And the next thing you got to know is there's a step that goes beyond giving your life over to Jesus. That is the step called discipleship. And what this is, is the process that you begin to grow in this newfound faith of yours. And we don't want to leave you alone to do that by yourself. God has given his Holy Spirit to you to help you in that. And he brings other people around you. And so we here at 412 Marietta want to help you in that process. So come on out to the church. We'd love to give you the encouragement, give you the tools that you need in this newfound faith. And uh, we'd love to help you grow in your walk. And so come on out on Sundays, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And if you do, come on out and say hello to me. I'd love to get to meet you and encourage you in your faith. God bless you. I love you.